This movie will show you how to use X-ray and neutron contrast calculator in IRENA package. First, let's load in Igor Pro the IRENA package. In macros, you find the command load IRENA SAS macros. Select and wait until the Igor Pro compiles. This will add an SAS many in IRENA package in Igor Pro. And here we can select scattering contrast calculator. At this moment, we have a main panel for scattering contrast calculator in which we can create a compound uh, to be used and analyzed. First, let's uh, create <coughs> aluminum oxide. So number of elements is aluminum and oxygen, that's two. This specific material is about four grams per cubic centimeter density. Now here the slider allows us access to the Elements. So this is element number one. This button pops up a, a periodic system. AL is the right button. So now we have AL. Uh, in this case, it's AL2. Um, isotope is important for neutrons only. Now we can go back in here, slide to number two, and change that as oxygen. AL203, so there's oxygen here. So we have created AL203 compound uh, with the density of 4 grams per cubic centimeter. You can actually find out here that it tells you it has 8 electrons, atomic weight of about 16. There are some parameters which are included in here, which are neutron tables of, of scattering plant densities. Further, you can find out calculated molecular weight and some other parameters because now it knows the number of molecules per one cubic centimeter, number of electrons per molecule, we can calculate <coughs> number of electrons per cubic centimeter, and therefore we can get using the uh, single electron, free electron scattering length, we can actually get a scattering length density in a free electron approximation. We can also calculate the neutron scattering length density, and then uh, we can calculate the other parameters here. Now for that we need a second phase, by default, the tool should come up with a vacuum as a second phase, but if you uncheck this checkbox, you can select out of saved compound substances. You can select, you can see I have a large number of them on my computer already. Here you can select another one and load it as a second phase, in which case you would find out what the scattering length and uh, contra, uh, what, what the row is for the second phase and neutron row. So <clears throat> here we can calculate, uh, here we can load the, the parameters. Now, uh, let's assume you have uh, aluminum oxide and a vacuum. A uh, vacuum would be, for example, voids, because they practically have a density of vacuum. So you would have a voids in, in aluminum oxide. In that case, your free electron approximation contrast is about 1100, 10 to the 20 centimeter to minus 4. Uh, for neutrons, you have 32.96, and the ratio between X-rays and neutrons about 33.62. Now, as I said, we need to be able to save the compound so we can actually compare, for example, precipitates uh, against the matrix or do some other calculations. Now, there are two options where you can save the substances. You can save them either inside the Igor experiment or outside on the computer. By default, the tool comes out with save with saving to the to the computer, to the hard drive on a computer, uh, which is where all of mine are. But if you, for example, have an experiment which you need to send to someone else so he can analyze it and you want to make sure that it's included on his computer too, what you can do is you can save within save it within this experiment. You can see this experiment was freshly created, there is nothing saved. And now we can save our AL203 inside this experiment. So we hit button save data. Um, we will give it any name we want, but the default one is a chemical formula, and we hit continue. Now we have AL203 saved in here. For the next step, let's create zirconium oxide, uh, so we have something which we can work with in an analysis calculator. So let's hit button new compound. That will clean up the tool, and now we think about that. Zirconium oxide is ZrO2, so we need again two elements. The density, I think, is about six. Um, Modify element change, we need zirconium, which is here, it's zirconium 1. Um, then we want to go and select element 2, 
oxygen and ZrO2, so it's number 2. So now we have zirconium oxide, <coughs> density about 6, and these parameters are, as I said, neutron and free electron X-ray approximation. We can say that as a zirconium oxide. Okay. So with these with this calculator you already have a you already have the usable contrast for some most of the X-ray experiments or all of the neutron experiments, assuming that you pick the right um, pick the right isotopes. Now, <clears throat> for X-rays, you may find it useful to be able to calculate uh, parameters uh, corrected for X-ray energy. So let's uh, hit anomalous calculator button. And that gives us anomalous scattering contrast calculator. In here, we can use Cromer-Lieberman code uh, to calculate the parameters depending on energy. Now, there are two ways you can uh, you can view this problem. Either you may have a, a fixed energy instrument and you want to know the parameters for your sample. So let's say that you have a tube-based desktop instrument with moly energy, which is 17.48 kiloelectron volts. So you put energy here, you keep the calculator in calculated single energy, 17.48. If you are doing small angle scattering, you keep Q at equal Q to zero. If you are doing diffraction, you may want to change this number to some higher Q value, whatever you are going to, which, which you're going to need. Let's assume that your sample thickness 100 microns is with 0 0.1 millimeter. Let's also assume you have ceramics with voids in it, so the second phase is vacuum, so keep the second phase here. And then we select zirconium oxide because we want to calculate for zirconium oxide with vacuum. With these parameters selected, we just hit button recalculate, and the table here is populated. <coughs> your delta rho square, your contrast in this case, would be 1890.3, 10 to the 20. I don't know if you remember from the previous previous uh, panel, but the free electron approximation is about 2100. It's a significant difference uh, for this specific energy. The other really interesting value in this table is the x minus mu t, which happens to be translated for any sane person as transmission. So basically this tool is telling you that your 100 microns of fully dense zirconium oxide have about 51% transmission. Uh, at this energy. So if you have 100 micron thick sample, you can probably do the experiment. For example, if your sample had 1 millimeter thickness, your transmission would be 0, 0, 001, which is 0.1%, and the experiment probably would not be particularly doable. Now the other option we have is we may have a synchrotron or some other instrument where we can change energies, and we are looking for which energy we should pick the best for our specific sample. In this case, what we want to do is calculate the parameters in an energy range. So we switch the tool in calculating energy range. And let's say we have an instrument which can go between 10 and 25 kiloelectron volts. Let's assume that we just want to roughly know where to go. So let's put 100 steps in here. And let's assume that we have still the 100 micron thick sample. Then what we do is we hit button recalculate. And after a few seconds, the tool comes back. And now we can display the results as a function of energy. So if we, for example, come here and say display delta rho squared, we will get a delta rho squared zirconium oxide versus vacuum. And you can see that at about 10, we start just below 2100, but it drops down to nearly 1700 at exactly edge, and then comes back up, and it's 2100 at about 25. So you can see that if you are doing anomalous experiment, you can use this tool to actually pick the energies at which you are supposed to do the experiment. So you, are, uh, <coughs> you do the experiments at, at appropriate energies. The other thing which you may find useful is I have a 100 micron thick sample and I need to be able to get through it what is my best energy. And again, you can display x minus mu t is the, is the transmission. So you can do this. And if you look on this graph here, you can see that at 10 kiloelectron volts, you probably can get about 5% transmission through your sample. As the energy increases, you're of course getting more and more through your sample, up to about 55% just before the edge. Then when you go above the edge, the transmission drops down to basically a few percent, 
and starts increasing again. And as you go up at 25 kilotron volts, you are still only about 15% transmission. So in this specific case, if you had a choice, you would have to go and, and do the experiment somewhere between, let's say, 14 or 15 kilotron volts and 18 kilotron volts, where you have the highest transmission of the sample. Okay, that's uh, all which can be done, or most of which can be done in the in the scattering contrast calculator. In this specific case, I was showing an example of a solid against void uh, material, but of course you can do the same calculations between two solid phases, uh, for example, precipitates in metal or, uh, or other types of these, these, these calculations.